Okay, now let's move to the polysaccharides, okay? So, from disaccharides, we move to the uh, polysaccharides. So, polysaccharides actually contains a glucose units, okay? So, they are uh, uh, glucose units that are actually uh, linked together with uh, linkages, of course, with glycosidic bonds, okay? And polysaccharides have uh, many, uh, many uh, monosaccharide units, okay? It's not just uh, glucose units, but mostly it's glucose but there are actually many um, monosaccharides units, okay? So, from the root word, it says it's poly. That means it's many uh, sugars or many monosaccharides, okay? So, most carbohydrates that are found in nature are actually large polymers of glucose. Thus, polysaccharides is a large molecule composed of many monosaccharides units and joined in one or more uh, chains, okay? So, so as you can see that plants have the ability to use the energy of sunlight, this is what we call the photosynthesis, to produce monosaccharides, principally, principally uh, glucose, okay, from carbon dioxide and water. So although sucrose is the major transport form of sugar in plants, uh, starch is actually the principal storage form in most plants, okay? So the first polysaccharide that we're going to discuss is about a starch, okay, as the primary or the principal storage form in most plants, okay. Nearly all plant cells contain some starch granules, but in some seeds, such as corn, as much as 80% of the cell's dry weight is starch, okay. So starch is actually a, a heterogeneous uh, material composed of the glucose polymers. We have amylose and amylopectin, okay. So th these are the two types of uh, starch. Okay, we have your amylose or amylopectin. Okay, so amylose, which accounts for about 80% of the starch of a plant cell, is a linear uh, polymer of the alpha D glucose connected by glycosidic bonds, which is alpha 1 4. Okay, so your amylose is only a linear polymer of the alpha D glucose. Okay, and, and between two glucose that are linked together. They are actually linked or connected by alpha-1 for glycosidic uh, bonds, okay? So, a single chain can contain up to 4,000 uh, glucose units, okay? And amylose coils up into a helix that repeats every six glucose units. So, why do you think so that an amylose has a tendency of coiling up itself or to form a helix? It is because... Your monosaccharides can also form hydrogen bonds with another uh, monosaccharide, okay? If there are too many alpha D glucose there, then possible that that in every six or in every six glucose units, there is a coiling up of the monosaccharides because of the hydrogen bonds between uh, monosaccharides. Remember that it's polyhydroxy. Your monosaccharides are polyhydroxy. So, it, it's capable of hydrogen bonding or intermolecular hydrogen bonds with another uh, monosaccharide, okay? So, your amylose can be degraded by two types of enzymes. You have the alpha amylase, okay, which cleaves the glycosidic uh, of amylose chains, okay? So, it cleaves the bonds between alpha D glucose, your alpha amylase. And mostly, alpha amylase is found in our... Uh, salivary glands, okay? That is where your alpha amylase uh, enzyme is located, okay? It's produced, okay? Whenever you chew some uh, or you eat uh, foods that are too, uh, that that uh, that contain starch, okay? So just like your, uh, those root crops, uh, like uh, what root crops are, uh, like uh, it could be a banana, the banana that are, uh, also contains starches, okay, the green one, okay, the banana. So, bananas are also contain starches, okay. So, corn, corn also contains starches, okay. So, whenever you eat those types of foods, okay, so your mouth has the alpha amylase enzymes that will, uh, met, uh, that will uh, digest, okay, and cleave the glycosidic bonds between two alpha D glucose uh, and the starch uh, and this in the that 
uh, polysaccharides, okay? So, that's why your first digestion happens in your mouth, okay? And the second uh, enzyme uh, that can degrade or that can cleave your amylose is the beta amylase, okay? So, the beta amylase cleaves the disaccharides maltose, okay? So, there is also a uh, maltose that can be found in the uh, chains or in the polymers of the amylose, okay? So, in order to cleave that uh, disaccharide, uh, maltose, we need to have the enzyme uh, beta amylase. Okay, so the enzyme, the enzyme beta amylase sequentially cleaves the disaccharide maltose from the reducing end of the amylose chain. Okay, so it's actually in the reducing end of the amylose chain. And the maltose is hydrolyzed into glucose by the enzyme uh, maltase, okay, in order to produce uh, glucose, okay. So, the glucose is quickly absorbed by the intestinal cells and used by the cells of the body as a source of energy. You remember, your maltose is a combination of both uh, two uh, glucose units, okay? So, if it is uh, if you have beta amylase now, so it will cleave those uh, glucose units and it will be used up by the body, okay? So, beta amylase is actually found and the, uh, they are actually secreted into the small intestine, Okay, and also in the pancreas. Okay, so the second, oh, this is the uh, the structure of the uh, linear polymer of amylose. Okay, and this is the helix uh, formation of the uh, amylose. Okay, so the helix formation is due to the uh, hydrogen bonding. Okay, the second one uh, type of starch is the amylopectin. Okay, so amylopectin is a highly branched amylose okay that are at, uh, in which the branches are attached to the c6 hydroxy groups by an alpha 1,6 uh, uh, glyco glycosidic bonds okay so the main link is actually alpha 1,4 but in branching the linking now is alpha 1,6 okay so the main chains consist of alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds and each branch contains uh 20 to 25 glucose units, okay? And there are so many branches that the main chain can scarcely be uh, distinguished, okay? So if the main link is a linear polymer of alpha-1,4, but there is actually a branch now, okay? The branching with uh, with the linkage of the alpha-1,6 uh, glycosidic bonds. Okay, so how did, what it uh, what is amylopectin looks like? So... Amylopectin looks like this, okay? So, you have the linear polymer of alpha-1,4, but the branching between two linear polymer of alpha-1,4 is the alpha-1,6. Okay, alpha-1,6 linkage, okay? That is where the branching will occur, okay? So, that is uh, amylopectin. Then, we have the second polysaccharide, which is glycogen. So, glycogen is the major glucose storage molecule in animals. And the structure of the glycogen is similar to the amylopectin. Okay, it's similar to amylopectin, which has the main link, alpha-1,4, uh, branch link, and also alpha-1,6. But the glycogen is actually mostly found in humans and animals. It is the uh, storage form of glucose in animals and humans. But while your amylopectin is a storage uh in a form of starch is the principal storage or glucose storage of in plants, okay? So, glycogen differs from amylopectin only by having more and shorter branches, okay? So, otherwise, the two molecules will, will be virtually uh, identical, okay? So, how do you distinguish uh, amylopectin and glycogen with their branching, okay? So, glycogen is also stored in the liver and the skeletal muscle. And... This is now the structure between the amylopectin and the glycogen, okay? So, they are both branch uh, polysaccharide, okay? The branching is found at the alpha-1,6 and the uh, main link is, it is alpha-1,4, okay? But as you can see that uh, in glycogen, these are actually shorter branches, but they have more uh, shorter branches. While in amylopectin, it has a longer uh, branch, okay? but too little branch. Too little, but they have uh, longer uh, longer branches, okay? 
So that's it. So this is the difference between the structure of the amylopectin and the glycogen. So, so glycogen is synthesized in the degradation uh, and synthesis and degradation in the liver are carefully uh, regulated. Okay, glycogen synthesis and degradation in the liver are carefully regula regulated. Okay, because uh, they, we have uh, hormones and also uh, are responsible for the regulation of the glycogen. Okay, in the liver, uh, it could be glycogen synthesis or glycogen degradation. Okay, remember that if you have a large amount of uh, glucose in your blood, it will be converted into uh, glycogen, okay? So, by the, the action of the insulin, okay? And also, if you have too little glu blood glucose, then the glycogen will be uh, broken down into smaller glucose units by the action of the, uh, uh, by the action of uh, the, uh, some uh, hormones, okay, that will be uh, converts the formation of glycogen to uh, to glucose units, okay. That is actually the, what we call the glycogenolysis, okay. So I already discussed that uh, when we go along with monosaccharides, okay. So now let's go to the last uh, polysaccharide, which is the cellulose. So the cellulose is the most abundant polysaccharide indeed the most abundant organic molecule in the world okay and cellulose is a polymer of the beta d glucose units that are linked by a beta 1 for glycosidic bonds okay so uh, this molecule contains 3000 glucose units but the largest known uh, cellulose are produced by the algae or the alga balonia okay which contains 26000 uh, glucose molecules on its a structure of cellulose. Cellulose is a structural component, okay? And this is the uh, structural uh, formation of the uh, 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 cellulose, okay? They are actually, the glucose units are linked by beta-1 for glycosidic bonds. So, cellulose are the structural component of the plant cell wall. The unbranched structure of the cellulose polymer and the beta-1 for glycosidic linkages allow cellulose molecules to form a long straight chains of parallel cellulose molecules called the fibrils, okay? And these fibrils are quite rigid and are held together tightly by hydrogen bonds. Thus, it is not surprisingly that cellulose is a cell wall structural element in plants, okay? So in contrast to glycogen, amylose, and amylopectin, cellulose cannot be digested by humans, okay? Because we don't have the enzyme cellulase okay so the reason is that we cannot synthesize the enzyme cellulase which can hydrolyze the beta 1 for glycosidic linkages of the cellulose polymer so indeed only a few animals such as termites cows and goats are able to digest cellulose okay these animals have within their digestive tracts microorganisms that produce the enzyme cellulase okay so the sugar released by this microbial digestion can then be absorbed and used by these animals. In humans, cellulose serves as our fiber in diet. Okay, so we cannot uh, digest a cellulose, but only animals can be able to uh, digest or hydrolyze the cellulose because they have the enzyme cellulase. Okay, that's why your cows and goats can eat uh, uh, plants or grass, okay, because they have this kind of enzyme. Okay. And because of this, if we are going to eat uh, uh, foods that are rich in cellulose, cellulose now will serve as our fiber in diet, which can enables us to have a uh, a very good uh, bowel uh, movement, okay, or a digestion in our stomach. 